Uh, Dr. Jefferson back at the Region 2 National Meeting, National Medical Association. I'm here with some very exciting news, a fantastic guest who just gave us some new presentation about a new medical school coming up at an HBCU. This is Dr. John Seeley. I'm going to let him introduce himself. We want to talk about this great opportunity that's coming up in our community. Doc. Okay. My name is John Seeley. I'm the founding dean of the proposed Maryland College of Osteopathic Medicine, which is a new medical school that we propose will be opening in the fall of 2024. Uh, at the maturity stage, you'll have 180 students per year, although we will start out with 90 students that first year. Uh, we are in the application phase of that, and we are beginning to uh, have some faculty that we're beginning to employ. And uh, it was great to come over to this meeting, the NMA, to um, let that idea come out in the medical community and also really um, hopefully hire some faculty. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited because like I told you before we started, my daughter is an alumnus of Morgan State in Baltimore. And to have the newest school, medical school, at an HBCU is crazy historic. Yeah. Because we only have a few. Yeah. We only have, we have four currently mm -hmm. uh, medical schools at HBCU. This will be the fifth. And it will be the, the first one in 45 years. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we will uh, be the first osteopathic medical school mm -hmm. in, uh, at an HBCU ever. As you know, um, the medical profession has osteopathic medicines, medicine and allopathic medicine, and a third of the medical students that, go to, that, that get medical degrees in 2030 will be osteopathic physicians. That's fantastic. I want to, de to describe osteopathic medicine. I, one of my best friends graduated from the osteopathic school at uh, Michigan State. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when I f did my residency in, at Brooklyn Hospital in Brooklyn, New York, mm -hmm. about about a third or so of our residents in the entire hospital were, were from the DO schools. So that was my first interaction working with them directly mm -hmm. as a resident. So I feel mm -hmm. kind of blessed with that. So I, it wasn't strange to me mm -hmm. working with DOs once I started going out in the practice. Again, I'm a, I'm, I'm a podiatrist in D.C. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm familiar with it, but for those who aren't familiar with what yeah. osteopathy I, is. I think that osteopathic physicians have a tendency to have learned to diagnose and treat with their hands besides all of the other modalities that the allopathic physician has done. So that is the really biggest process. Um, do some of the, do all of the same type of specialties, but they do have they do spend approximately 160 hours uh, throughout that four-year period learning how to diagnose and treat with their hands. So this new school, I, I want people to understand, this is not a flash in the pan. He's been working on this before, and he's worked with new schools and in and, and this position. Thing. You're, you're, you're not a novice. You're not just jumping yeah. out, jump, jumping off the ledge to see what works. Explain to the folks how you put together a new school. Well, you know, first of all, we have to get real good people, and I, I, I think that I have uh, spent quite a bit of time uh, preparing myself for this, this opportunity. Uh, I was a... a, a Director of Student Rotations for Michigan State College of Osteopathic Medicine. Then I became a direct uh, a, 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 a director of medical education for a program, the largest uh, teaching health center program in Michigan and in in the country actually. And that's where you train the residents. And then I went to Arc, um, actually Minnesota, and was the associate dean of clinical affairs there. Then I went to Arkansas. Fort Smith, Arkansas, where I was the Associate Dean of Clinical Medicine. So those are positions that are right under the dean. You understand what, the, what it would take to be the dean of a medical school. So currently I'm the Chief Academic Officer and the dean of the school. So yeah, and uh, went to Michigan State University, mm -hmm. just like your friend did, and uh, have done a lot. I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon by training, um, have spent some time in family medicine. My first two years before I went into my surgical uh, training was spent in family medicine in Union Springs, Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I brag that it's the second poorest county in uh, Alabama and the 17th poorest county in this country, which allows me to understand about disparities and, 
and underrepresented minorities having issues with the health care. So explain to the folks, so you did a great job talking about it during your presentation this morning, or this afternoon rather, about how this works toward the underrepresentation of people of color, particularly African Americans, African Americans in healthcare. Well, you know, as you know, um, the number of physicians that we have currently in our system that are mm -hmm. African American is only about six percent. Mm -hmm. The population is about sixteen percent, seventeen percent African American. So there is the disparity is very, very wide. Mm -hmm. What we plan to do is that the medical school will be on the campus of Morgan State, which means that the pipeline is right there. Morgan State has 9,000 students. So we hope to, from that standpoint, recruit off of that campus and also recruit off of other campuses, campuses that are HBCUs. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that will help, help us a lot. One of the things that really has been a very difficult process for students is uh, the interest exam. And we are in the process of looking at other mechanisms that would allow us to understand how to to accept qualified students without the, the, the hindrance of that exam. So we're looking at that hope also. Talk, you also mentioned in your presentation about having the students engaging in, in community health, public health. Tell me a little bit more about that. Mr. Well, I, I think it's very it's obvious that if a student is, is going to stay and work in a community, he has to be trained in that community. Mm -hmm. So we think that having students trained in the community is very important, not only for us learning from a medical standpoint what they do, but also it, it lets the community get used to having students out there. And we think these students can do things like tutor students and, and uh, actually be mentors to students as they progress through the, uh, the uh, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, high school, and go to college. Mm -hmm. We know that in order to to uh, influence a student mind, it has to be at the sixth grade level. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we want to do is make sure that we can do that. And um, it's going to be great because we feel that we can uh, lay the pipeline, not just because it's going to be at Morgan, but in the, in the high schools here in the city. Okay. So for those who want to be involved, whether uh, when does the application process as far as the, the class start no, we, and all, we, that, all that? We are not able to recruit the classes until we get further down their credit. Okay. But, but we, you know, we, we, if people want to get involved, um, I can give you an email. The email is Seeley, S-E-A-L-E-Y, mm -hmm. at Maryland.com, M-A-R-Y-L-A-N-D-C-O-M mm -hmm. dot org. And uh, we will look at that and if, they, if, if uh, we will answer all of those inquiries and mm -hmm. try to make sure that we can get people to help us. Dr. Seeley, I appreciate it. We are extremely excited about the work that you're doing, okay. uh, a new med school, a new osteopathic school on the campus of an HBCU. I'm an HBCU grad myself, okay. Prairie View A&M. And uh, I, I'm just hyped. Again, with my daughter being a graduate, I'm, I'm calling her as soon as this conversation <laughs> is over okay. and let her know what's happening. Uh, okay. The information that Dr. Seeley uh, spoke of will be in the description of this video. So if you want to learn how to get involved with uh, Maryland Com, the, college of, the new College of Osteopathic Medicine, check all that information out. Give them a ring, drop them a line, get involved. This will be part of history. See you on the next podcast.